Thank you, Dr. Natasha Seaman, for talking to us today about your research you're planning to present at Surgical Education Week. Tell us about your research. So my study is looking at stress in surgeons and uh, specifically stress in the operating room. Uh, we know from previous work that the burnout rate in surgeons is particularly high and although we were finding that individual surgeons were admitting that, that str stress was a big part of their career, um, the surgical culture really made it feel that surgeons couldn't talk about it. And this was actually compounding the effect that it had on surgeons. Um, and so what we felt was that in order to really understand how stress was affecting surgeons, we needed a more complete view of how the surgeons were experiencing stress. Um, so previous studies had been done in the simulation setting and demonstrated that stress was affecting a surgeon's technical skills, mm. but also their non-technical skills like communication and teamwork. Sure. Um, so we felt that it was important to study this in the real world setting where the stress of the culture and emotion could be better understood because these things are hard to rep replicate in the simulation setting. So we created a methodology and we aimed to study the, what we called the complex phenomenon of stress and we considered that there was four components, so physiologic stress, cognitive, emotional, and sociocultural. And we monitored surgeons with wireless physiologic monitoring equipment while they operated on real patients in real ORs. Uh, we took salivary cortisol samples, which is a specific measure for stress. And we triangulated this physiologic data with perceived stress data from inventories, as well as pre- and post-operative interviews and detailed observer notes. And how did those uh objective measurements correlate with the uh, subjective stress? So interestingly they didn't uh, correlate uh, very well but I think that's actually kind of um, not that surprising because what we found was there were times where surgeons were showing signs of physiologic stress but they didn't perceive stress and on the flip side we saw that there was times where the surgeons perceived stress but may not have been showing the same physiologic response that we would expect. Um, so that was an interesting finding and a physiology really proved an important guide and helped us kind of probe the, the surgeons for specific parts of the case that may have been stressful. But what we really found was that the psychological stress was actually just as important as the physiologic stress. Mm -hmm. did, uh, did you d determine sources of stress in the operating room? We did actually. One of the really interesting findings was that much of the stress that surgeons was experiencing was actually not related to the patient or even the operating uh, room table. So uh, we found a, a big part of stress uh, actually was with respect to the composition of the surgical team. So the residents and fellows, the nursing team, the anesthesia team. And uh, this is really interesting because normally surgeons don't have much control over this. And they cited it as either a uh, de-stressor, so it could be a good thing based on their team, or it could also be a, a cause of stress uh, based on if it was new people that they weren't used to working with or they weren't sure if they were able to deal with these kind of specific cases. We also found that the surgeons often talked about things outside of the operating room causing stress, so a sick patient on the floor, um, time pressures to make sure that their cases were done in a timely fashion so that cases wouldn't get cancelled. And it was really interesting to see how much, of, uh, how much of the career was really affecting the surgeons, even in the operating room, where you would expect their focus to be specifically on that patient and on the operation at hand. Yeah. So you said it, um, our culture doesn't encourage talking about stress. What, were surgeons reluctant to talk about their stress for your study? So uh, it was interesting. I mean, we initially tried to select for people that we thought could be honest about the stress experience because we thought that would be a really important aspect. Um, we had surgeons who I think were very open and honest with us. Um, and I was surprised at maybe some of the surgeons who I would have thought from my experience as a resident would be the tough, nope, nothing stresses me out, I'm totally cool under pressure were actually some of the people that uh, really opened up and, and told us a lot about their stress experience. And I think one of the really interesting and cool things is that people really want to talk about these things. And when you give them an outlet to talk about them, um, it, they really open up to you. And I think that that, you know, maybe part of that was a cathartic experience for them. Sure. And maybe that's something we should be uh, involving as part of the surgical curriculum and part of continuing education as well. Sure. So and where do you see a study like this leading? Are there other things you'd like to see studied or changes based on what you've observed? 
Yeah, absolutely. I think now that we have a better idea of how complex the experience of stress is in the operating room, um, we can really start to think about how stress is affecting surgeons. So initially, we really wanted to know how is stress affecting decision making in the OR? Um, and how is it affecting teamwork? And how can we help surgeons manage this stress? Um, a lot of surgeons were not even aware of what was causing them stress. So I'll give you an example. We had a surgeon whose heart rate went up uh, when, this, when the fellow was doing a vascular anastomosis. And although he initially didn't tell me that that part of the case was stressful, when I probed him and said, you know, we saw that your heart rate was elevated at this time. Can you tell me what was going on here? And he said, yeah, you know, actually, now that you mention it, he said, I find it really hard when I don't have control. Sure. And I do feel that, um, you know, my, I, I do feel more anxious when I'm letting the fellow do an important part of the case. And that's, I think it's a really important concept because that's basically what all of surgical training is, you know, slowly letting the residents take over more and more responsibility. And how do we navigate that? How do we um, help surgeons realize what's causing them stress and then deal with that stress in appropriate ways? Cool. So you'll be presenting your research at Surgical Education Week in Seattle this upcoming April, right? Yes. Coming all the way from Toronto, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Great. And I just have to give uh, kudos to Toronto for being sort of a, a thought leader in surgical education. Thank you. Yeah, it's a great part of uh, part of the world and and part of the culture to be a part of. I'm really happy to be here. Look forward to seeing you in Seattle. Same to you. Thanks. Bye -bye. Thanks for checking out the Op Report. Help us keep conversations alive on topics in general surgery. Check out more episodes of the Op Report and other on surgery content here at YouTube. Find us at Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. And find our homepage at onsurge.com. Join the conversation and tell us what topics you'd like to hear about and what people you'd like to hear from.